Hey everyone, this is my reaction to the seventh episode of Dumbbell Non Kila Motaru. And last episode, we finally met a wonderful Russian girl that came to Japan to participate in an arm wrestling tournament, then became rivals with Hibiki, transferred to Hibiki school, not her class, but to make up for that oversight, she is actually doing her homestay at Hibiki's home. So, yeah, she got pretty involved in Hibiki's life in a hurry, didn't she? Which is fine. Uh, Zena's pretty great, so any excuse to have more of her, I will take. So let's get into the episode and see what Xena does and what our other characters do and just more importantly what they all do together. So three, two, one, play. Arakawa. Phantom Animation. Anime, okay. Yeah, you're suddenly in my house. Bit of a surprise. I'm sure from TV. Don't you mean Jozu? Of course, I mean, <laughs> that is how you would do it. Well, anime helps with that as well. <laughs> That's kind of surprising. I'm not sure how much Jackie Chan knows about Japanese culture, but maybe more than I thought. I wish we could have expanded that conversation and Xena could have told us what her favorite anime were. I bet she'd watch Dumbbell Non Kila Motaru, don't you think? I'm sure her favorite anime are just all anime that have, you know, important Russian characters. You, know, you might think you can't learn anime from if you learn Japanese from anime, but you can. The secret is to turn off the English subtitles. But you can do it. It'll just take a while if you don't supplement it with things like flashcards and grammar guides and stuff. You can do it. Just so much muscle in this opening, it's also very intimidating. Want to be an idol? Question mark. Who wants to be an idol? And why is it a question? Oh no, that's the end of the world. Oh. Well, what do we do with our time then? Yeah, like what's even there to do in life? Watch the language. <laughs> uh. Sounds like a great idea. <laughs> that is not, yeah, that is not in Japan. It's kind of in China. We don't have a great wall here either. <laughs> That's, that is silly. It's kind of funny because some people do joke and they call anime Chinese cartoons, you know. I wonder if that's part of the joke. Probably not. And girls have a meet together, I guess that's a pretty good alternate way to spend the day. Uh, ditching the salary man life. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, that's these girls always have meat on the brain, let's be honest. Special friendship discount, that sounds amazing. Sp wait, what'd you say? Spasita? I didn't quite catch that. Sure, let's go with that. Indeed. Tina's personal opinion. I guess so. Please do. 
Girls can't get enough meat. Why are you dressed like a go? Well, you can be dressed as a cow all you want, I don't mind. Of course. I uh, makes sense. Good to be rich in protein. That's the good stuff. That's beneficial. We're just bringing them more and more meat, aren't we? <laughs> I think I knew that. <laughs> yes, that, whatever you said. So why are the subs calling her Gina now in a... I thought it, did. I thought it said Zena last time. But maybe I'm getting mixed up with what my enemy list said. You can't have a Machio segment without the muscle tearing shirt, so. <laughs> There's the pose. That was a great pose. The eye glow, the background, and you. I don't think I've ever seen a human being look that happy before. This is Hibiki for you. You got big, you got chubby for a reason. <laughs> uh, maybe, but maybe it was a Chinese wrestler. <laughs> well, your calorie intake does kind of have to be proportional to how much you burn. That does not look healthy. <laughs> yeah, you, you cracked it. Congrats, Zena. And that food is just getting gone. <laughs> she makes some great faces. Now this is a perfect amount. <laughs> Every day is a cheat day, that's her secrets. Yeah. That poor fish. Faith clean. Yeah, you gotta gotta pay that bill. Well that's understandable. You eat that much, you gotta pay for it. What? Oh? Well, somebody could have told me that before. I well, didn't know schools did that. Oh, okay. I guess that makes sense now. Could have told us that like six episodes ago. You saw the house, right? The chairs you broke? <laughs> Tsumani, that's a good thing. Maybe we don't maybe we don't have to work as much now. Look I pay for the food though. Congrats, CBK. Australia, New Zealand. Ocean Ocean D Ocarina. <laughs> That's what you recognized, really? Uh. But yeah, like somebody else about to find out her secret identity as a... Oh, yeah, she's got a picture. She's got a picture. Uh, That's... <laughs> That's a problem for Sensei.
Yes. Well. <laughs> yeah, I saw that coming. Was it? If it was a business, Zena Black Miner. I'm joking about the blackmail. I don't think it is. She has a picture in common. Whew, Sensei. Is she like taking a picture of her privately? <laughs> uh, yes. Very, very good. Uh, very good use of the picture here to convince her to do this. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to be a secret, you know. I'm sure you'll tell me. Oh, that... that face. Very interesting atmosphere for this scene. Yeah, nobody else could possibly have a mole in that location. And found out. Your life is over now. What do we do? <laughs> I'm glad she calls it that. Oh wow, she is serious. I mean, that doujinji just writes itself, doesn't it? Don't we all? Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> Tell me your terms. <laughs> Uh, she's probably read a lot, read a lot of Dojin she's so. Yeah, she looks really happy there. Of course, the foreigner wants to go to Akihabara. <laughs> uh, someday she'll figure out that China and Japan are not the same country. But then again, plenty of Americans don't, so... Yes, old lady. Walk. That's exercise. Of course, that's what we gotta do in this show. Active rest. You would think. <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> That's a little bit weird. Hataraku Saiba. Okay. Walking's probably doable for most people. I thought the camera's gonna continue to go up there. I'm a little bit disappointed that I didn't. Yeah, it kind of stops being rest if you're <laughs> running like that. Makes sense. I just love the chibi of her. Okay, let's time to rest. Such a cool looking gin, isn't it? It would attract me to it. Okay, not sure you need to chime in there, but, but good job. Yeah, I wouldn't want to bounce too much, Sensei. People might stare. So in that case, it's good to do this with someone. Because she's a foreigner that likes anime, I mean, 
pretty pretty obvious why she'd want to go. Oh, I forgot. I forgot we were supposed to be idols in this episode. <laughs> Kung Fu. I still think you might be getting some things mixed up. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Kung Fu's Japanese karate is. <laughs> it's just hilarious how she just mixes Chinese stuff in. <laughs> oh, you want to meet an idol? Hug them? Oh, become one, right. You should wear blue. Wow. <laughs> that, that would be a great spinoff. <laughs> we'll do it. We can do it. It sounds like a plan. <laughs> I will tell them. They'll, I'm sure they'll be up for it. <laughs> are you eavesdropping on things that are happening nowhere near you? Because that's impressive that you can do that. Public Idol Audition, aspire to be a real idol. Public Idol Audition. I don't know, things might get exciting. So normal. How boring. But what about girls that lift? Does that change things? Oh, they're cute. Love the belly show in there. Again, you may be surprised. <laughs> so, have I already told EBK and them about this? What am I looking at? Uh, I guess they involved more than just them. It's gym idols, that's a new thing. <laughs> <laughs> I can hardly believe this is happening. Well, yeah, I would agree to live to carry you guys in there as well. <laughs> the muscle girls. <laughs> uh, just let it let it go. It's great. Not of a heart heart attack. <laughs> I think the audience are into it. It might just be. It would be amazing if the rest of the show was an idol anime. Imagine all the salt on the internet. Oh. Okay. Oh, wow. Uh, language. But anyway, I guess that. That did. I guess that answers that question. It's just hide her identity. <laughs> I guess that's how the talk went. Went pretty smoothly. But really, is that the best mask you could have come up with to wear? Don't back down. You gotta see this video to the end. Show us your specialties. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Yes, they're a new type of idols. Be more open-minded. You'll... you'll see. Oh. <laughs> uh, come on, Hibiki. Show them how you can lift. Yeah, they're, they don't mess around. They're legit. <laughs> uh, nice ball, Hibiki. Well, yeah, what's not to love? Machio is here to explain it. Because 
Because Deadlift was mentioned before in the show, but I don't think anyone actually did it in the show. Deadlift is serious business. With, a, with that silly mask on, no less. <laughs> well, no, what was your first clue? The fact that he's almost wearing no clothes, the fact that he's enormous, knows a lot about weightlifting. Okay. Let's see you lift that dead weight. Lift with your imagination. I am concentrating on it as best I can. Come on. Okay. Good job. I knew you had it in you. The crowd goes wild. Oh, wow. It's Machio. What a plot twist. And then they win, right? <laughs> she seems proud of herself. I mean, they all do, but... <laughs> so it's an unexpected development, but it's great. <laughs> well, they just warped his entire perspective. Yeah, I didn't think so, but I had hope. So I guess this is not going to turn into an idol anime. I kind of figured it was Sensei wearing the the kendo mask, whatever it's called, but it's nice to have confirmation. I was kind of hoping there was some new mysterious girl under that, but no, I guess not. So no new girls to be had in the show. And this is where we see her wear the, uh, the mask. Not why sure why she wears it there in particular. Is there an audience there that we don't see? And what's our work gonna work out gonna be at the end? Not really. Shoulder. What's a reasonable way? Be more specific. Slightly. Oh, why wow, I can do it while sitting. All the random locations they do these things in. Nothing beats the aquarium, but... Yeah, don't go completely horizontal. How do you avoid moving your shoulder blades, though? Oh, I'm feeling it. Okay, we did it. Well, you did it. I kind of just watched. Very nice book. I'll think about it. So that was the seventh episode of Dumbbell Non Kila Motaru. And yeah, the more I see of Xena, uh, the more I like her. She <laughs> just, you know, it's nothing new having an anime character that's like a foreigner that's went to go to Japan because they like Japanese culture and all that got from anime and and whatnot. You know, I've seen characters like that before. 
uh, usually they're, you know, blonde and blue eyes and all that, but, you know, I think it's also happened probably with a Russian character here and there. But it's a character, a foreign character that mixes up Chinese and Japanese things together and just kind of puts it all under the umbrella of Japanese culture. That's pretty funny. That is pretty funny, and I'm glad it wasn't just a one-off thing where it could with a Jackie Chan thing. But she just, no, that's a real thing. Like, she watched Japanese stuff and Chinese stuff and just all just kind of lumped it all together. I don't know, it just, it's just funny. It's just, I don't know. I can't really explain why I find it so funny. I just do. Probably because as an American, I'm kind of used to people generally like Chinese, Japanese, and eh, it's all the same, whatever, same place. Like, there are a lot of people that are ignorant about that. So, I don't know, just seeing it in this kind of context, it just, I just, kick, I, I get a kick out of it. But anyway, the big thing of this episode was the gym was closed, which means we got to do something else, and that's always a tragi tragedy. Travesty? Tragedy? Which one is it? I don't know. I can't English. But the point is, I had to find something to do, and we went to a place to eat food that Hibiki works at. I think she said her brother owned the place, because he didn't want to be a Japanese salary man, and I mean, really, who does? So she, she needs the money for not only her food expenses, because she eats, you know, like the, the, like an elephant, but she also has to pay her gym fees. However, Akemi was nice enough to let her know that she apparently picked the right school to go to because the chair, chairman's willing to pay for the gym membership because it's Akemi's sister, and that sort of thing is relevant to her interests. So that kind of works out. So yeah, I could have told her that before. Like, I don't know how many times she's paid for that gym membership at this point, but... If it's been, you know, any any real amount, then it's it's unfortunate. Uh, I wonder if the I wonder if she'd be willing to back pay that. But anyway, that that's good for her, of course. And Zena is still trying to. She still very much views Yibiki as a rival, wanting to know her secrets and all that, and just misunderstanding various things. Like, wow, she's eating so much. That must be that must be your secret, because you know what normal person would do that. But anyway. That just, she'll probably learn eventually that Hibiki is just Hibiki. Her strength is not from any kind of specific routine or anything. It's just, which is what she's got, you know. I don't question that too much. Gotta love uh, Sensei in the cow outfit explaining things about beef and all that. That was, that was good. But yeah, things definitely get interesting when Xena recognizes a certain mole, uh, like, underneath Sensei's eye. And she's like, wow, she, no, that's, that's the famous cosplayer, Yulia something or other, Mako, Kako, Lako, Daka, whatever her name was. I just remember her name, first name, Yulia, because it was written Yuri in it. So I remember that part. But she found out Sensei's secrets. And, you know, it wasn't like a full-on blackmail or anything. She just kind of told her about it. And Sensei wants her to keep quiet about it. So she... Just spends the day with her, you know, makes, keeps her happy. Even though she said she didn't have any real intention of telling anyone about it, because she doesn't want to hurt Sensei, you know, she likes her. She likes cosplayers. So, you know, no no ill intention there. So that's how they end up, you know, spending time together, taking pictures of her and whatnot. But yeah, that scene when she tells Sensei about it was just, I just, the atmosphere, it looks like something straight out of a horror anime, really. But yeah, that first cosplay we saw her in at like uh, 9 minutes, 55 seconds. Was that supposed to be like Chun Li? I'm not completely sure. I'm not super into Street Fighter. But it's what it looked like to me at first glance. Man, Russian is a hard language to pronounce. But yeah, I just gotta love how happy, happy Xena was just sitting there with her. It was great. But uh, yeah, just I wonder how a school would react if it turned out one of their teachers was, you know, a cosplayer cosplaying all those sexy outfits, you know. I would do wonder what kind of backlash there would be about that. I mean, would you get fired for it or would you just get a slap on the wrist and told to stop, you know. I'm a little curious. Not curious enough to want that to happen to Sensei, but, you know. Because, like, is that, like, specifically against the rules of being a teacher? You can't go out and be a cosplayer wearing lewd outfits and have your picture taken? I don't know. Japan has a lot of strict rules and certain things, so it's hard to say for sure. But it would certainly be frowned upon at the very least, I'm pretty sure. But of course she wants to go to Akihabara, and Sensei, I don't know why she was confused, but why she wanted to go to Akihabara, because that's a very typical thing. If you're a foreigner that loves Japanese culture because of the anime and stuff that you watched, Akihabara is pretty very glorified. It's got all this great otaku goods, you know, figures, games, 
you know, any any kind of thing really that an otaku would really wants that they have. So yeah, yeah, it's pretty normal to want to go there. Like I would like to go there at some points. Let's see, where's that one part where she talks about where she wants to go and mixes in some Japanese, uh, some Chinese into it? I can't remember. I wanted to go back to that part, but I'm not really sure. I may have probably already passed it. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but yeah, they talk about pack, passive and active uh, cool off basically. Which, you know, that makes sense. Back when I was in high school, or we did physical education, PE, after we did a bunch of jogging, we would, like, walk a lap as kind of a cool-off thing, so I'm so it's, I'm sure it's kind of a similar concept. So it's not like it's too shocking to me. Okay, I think it was actually around here. After discovering anime, I got addicted to cosplayers, bonsai, kung fu movies. Okay. Cosplayers, bonsai, that's both Japanese. Kung fu is Chinese. So, was that the only Chinese thing she stuck in there? Japanese food, bonsai, yoga. Okay, yoga, I'm actually not sure. Bonsai Japanese, I'm pretty sure. Yoga, that could be Japanese. I don't care enough to look it up right now. But, I'm not actually sure about yoga, <laughs> its origins. But that's the only other thing I could think of in there that was not Japanese, so that might have been Chinese. But anyway, that's why she talks about idols and how that's why she wants to go to Akihabara. Because she's not, she's, not, she's not satisfied with just watching idols. She wants to become one. Which is a noble goal that I think any cute anime girl should aspire to. And then we get to and her mental image of all them wearing idol outfits was pretty great. Although I feel like she should have worn blue because every time she see we have her cool Russian aura, you know, it's usually blue. So, you know, but I guess I got, got the blue outfit before her. All the other colors I'm okay with. But, yeah, too bad they didn't wear those outfits at when they actually did, did audition. But I'll definitely, I can accept their swimsuits as a choice. A teacher becoming an idol is understandably a very bad idea. That'd be amazing. I don't think there's an anime about that, but there should be a teacher that's secretly an idol. It's like the main character. That'd be something else. It's kind of hard to have a secret identity as an idol because everyone, like, sees you and stuff. Unless you wear a mask on stage, in which case, I don't think fans would like that very much. But yeah, the girls agreed to the whole idol thing pretty easily. <laughs> they just come on stage being carried by other members from the Silverman gym, wearing their school swimsuits, looking just really happy, excited about it, you know? It's like, right when they got on stage, and both Hibiki and Akemi especially looked like they are really into it. And the guy that was so upset, well, not upset, that was so fed up with all these normal idols that are a normal level of cuteness, so boring, <laughs> that he gets these idols show up in swimsuits that lift weights and stuff, and he's like, you know what, I stand corrected, I think normal, it's fine, okay, let's let's go back to that, can we go back to that, please? I liked how that was kind of his attitude that by the end, by the end of it. And also got the reveal of Sensei's kendo mask. <laughs> It's just level easily they agree to the idol thing. <laughs> but yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that entire scene. That was great. The audience was into it as well. I know, deadlift just sounds so frightening every time I hear it, what it's called. A deadlift. <laughs> like, it sounds like something you do and then... It either sounds like you lift a dead body, or it sounds like you kill yourself lifting it. Like, lifting it causes your death. That's what it sounds like. Just going by the name. So the, the, the names always scared me a bit. But since I did it, so that's what matters. But yeah, I, a pretty good episode. Like I said, getting more of Xena is great. She's turned out to be a very enjoyable character. Very fun character. Even if she, you know, doesn't quite you understand what the, what's Japanese and what's Chinese. Like it's kind of blended in her head, but... She's passionate about what she likes, so that's what matters. But no, Hong Kong, you're not going to find that in Japan. That'd be pretty tricky. Of course, Pina Matsuri, there was a girl that was trying to get to Japan and end up in China instead. So almost a reverse kind of situation. She really could probably find Hong Kong, but she had the issues finding Japan. But no, Hong Kong is not in Japan. You'll find Tokyo. That's probably the closest you're going to get. And then we finished off the... 
But we had a final segment with just uh, some kind of shoulder lifting exercise, which they did, and they did it very well, as expected of our, our cast. Thank you for watching, and a special thanks to Snokey for supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you consider clicking the like button and leaving a comment, because that's a great and easy way to let me know that people want more. If you want to do something big to help the channel, you can support me on Patreon and get nice benefits like early access to certain videos. See you next time.